The Oakland Coliseum has been home to the athletics since they moved from Kansas City back in 1968. It's the fifth oldest ballpark in the MLB. A franchise with a rich tradition of greatness from the dynasty of the 70s to the early 80s and the excitement of Billy Ball. And no one will forget the greatest base stealer of all time, Ricky Henderson, and one of the great legends out of the bullpen, Dennis Eckersley. The Oakland A's and the Redwood Empire Baseball League celebrate here in 2022 their 12th annual A Day at the Coliseum. You're looking live at the Coliseum in Oakland, California as APN Sports presents coverage of the 2022 Redwood Empire Baseball League's A Day at the Coliseum. It's game one of three as the REBL Athletics take on the Mets. And I'm Jeff Lowry with APN Sports. So glad you could join us for this game. It's been four long years since we played ball in Major League Baseball's fifth oldest ballpark. Certainly a such a thrill to be back and a special thanks to Kenton Lewis for all the hard work in coordinating this very special event. Getting a look at the A's and some of the players that will be participating in today's game. The Mets have a very talented roster. The pitching matchup will be Chris Fantasia who will be getting the start here. He wears number 22. He's a right-handed pitcher. We'll see him here in a moment. There he is. And on the other side will be another outstanding right-hander in Jarrell Davenport. Temperatures should get up in the high 80s here today, but looks like as they prep the field and making the final preparations, we should be starting somewhere in the mid 70s in the newly named Ricky Henderson Field. It's a day at the Coliseum on APN Sports. <laughs> no, no. God. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the Redwood Empire Baseball League. Let's send it down to the field for the player introductions, including the starting catcher, Hassan Halfin. Travis Miller. Batting third. Third baseman, number 99, Albert. Batting fourth, shortstop, number 33, Bobby Selectus. <laughs> Batting fifth, number 50, Jarrell Davenport. Batting sixth, first baseman, number 12, Tony Corkill. Batting seven, second baseman, number one, Casey Ferguson. Just walking in. <laughs> no, no, no rushing up. Yeah. Batting eight, right fielder, number 16, Clem Healy. Batting ninth, right fielder. Number 41, Anthony Lopez. Hi. I'm gonna cough. Wait. And batting 10th, second baseman, number 24, Mark Stoll. In the back room, Braden Salentis. Leading off, pitcher, number 
22, Chris Fantasia. Batting second, center fielder, number 34, Josh Windler. Batting third, third baseman, number 20, Owen White. Batting fourth, first baseman, number 25, Zach Mendeley. Batting fifth, catcher, number 24, Ryan Hunt. Batting sixth, left fielder, number 27, Jordan Greenlee. Batting seventh, second baseman, number 55, Angelo Bendeley. Let's do it. Batting eighth, designated hitter, number 23, Alfonso Robles. Batting ninth, designated hitter, number 38, Matt Yostin. Oh, let's go, let's go, boys! Woo! Number 10, Nick Rockett! Big Nick! Batting 11, short stop, number 35, Jonathan Merdo! Look at that, bye-bye. Close enough. We'll take it. <laughs> and batting draw. Right fielder. Number, number 14. Brian Montanez. Let's go, boys. Good yeah. job, huh? Let's do it. And you're starting lineup for today's game. All right, now it's time for our ceremonial first pitch. And Brayden Salentis throwing to his sister Bailey. And a pretty hard throw as we get set for game one of three here from the Oakland Coliseum. And you're getting a look at the right-handed starting pitcher and manager, Chris Fantasia. The umpires for this game, it's gonna be Mark June Kiliani, Dylan Brewster, Chris Chandler, and Mike LeBoy. Now Mike LeBoy and Mark are going to be doing the PA announcing, so it's a three-man crew. And you're getting a look at the A's catcher, Hassan Halfin, a very talented player. Comes in, six foot, 195 pounds, 35 years old, and he takes a first pitch, first pitch at 9.04. He was born in Berkeley, raised in East Oakland, California currently working as a truck driver in his free time and will often find him on a motorcycle. He swings and hits one a ton, way back into deep left center field, and it's gonna go all the way to the seven up sign in left center field. Halfin around second, coming to third, and he's gonna be in with a lead off stand up triple. And this game is underway in a big, big way for the A's. Well, here's Travis Miller, second place hitter in the lineup, 42-year-old, father of four beautiful children. Carson, Clayton, Adrian, and Dazzy, soon to be married to his current girlfriend, Shelby. So a runner at third, a leadoff triple by Hassan Halfin. Of course, we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, this stadium opened up in 1966. And then the Oakland A's came here in 1968. And it didn't take them long to get into the playoffs. In 1971, they won the American League Western Division title. And then, of course, the subsequent years of 72, 3, and 4, they were world champions. 
after really reeling in Kansas City for 13 years from 1955 to 1967. And one of the big reasons why the A's were so successful is because of the core group of that strike three called outstanding pitch by Fantasia. That's his first strikeout of the game. And now one of the top athletes on the field here today, Albert Higgs, multi-year MVP, always seems to be in the top five in batting average and slugging. He was drafted by the Detroit Tigers and was the Sacramento Rattlers starting quarterback for years where he took them to several championships. But you go back to the 68 Oakland A's and you look at the team and the talent that they they brought over from Kansas City. Names like Burt Campanaris, Rick Monday, Sal Bando, Reggie Jackson, Joe Rudy, Catfish Hunter, and Blue Moon Odom. A couple of the standout names and you can see why that team went on to make the playoffs five consecutive years, 1971 through 75. They were division champs and three pennants and three World Series. Higgs pops this one up, and this one's gonna be playable for the second baseman, and there's two down here in the inning. Bobby Salinas. Bobby Salinas, an Oakland native, Santa Rosa resident, married to his wife Promise, daughters Bailey and, Bra and son Braden. They threw out and caught the first ceremonial pitch here today. A big Oakland A's fan is Bobby Salentis, a very versatile player. He fouls off the first offering. He always says the Coliseum is his second home, 12th season as a player manager in the REBL with the A's, made it to two American League Championship, but lost in 2015 and again in 2016. No score, runner at third. We're in the top of the first inning, and he just got plunked. So runners will be on the corners, and no hard feelings as Fantasia, who has a strikeout, and now a hit batsman, and he's given up one hit so far, and the batter's gonna be starting pitcher Jarrell Davenport. Born in San Francisco. Father of two. Mesmeré and Jarrell Jr. Davenport, been playing baseball since he was seven years old. A pretty nice accomplishment during his career. Was throwing a no-hitter in Babe Ruth. A good healthy cut at that one. And he pitched a one-hit shutout during an all-star game in Hayward West Little League. And that one-hitter actually made the local paper. So he's up there with first and third occupied. Two outs here in the first. And a swing and a miss. The second strikeout of the inning for Fantasia. And we're heading to the home half. The A's nothing and the Mets are coming up. All right, we go now to the bottom half of inning number one. A hit, a hit batsman, and two stranded for the A's, and now the Mets will be facing a tough right-hander in Jarrell Davenport. Chris Fantasia will start things off, followed by Josh Wendler and then Owen White. It's a day at the Coliseum. Chris, I guess with the last name, uh, Fantasia, I mean, uh, you got to have a, a walk-up song that's that dramatic. He's out of Kensington, Maryland, lives in Roanoke Park. He was drafted by the REBL Mets in 2018, former semi-professional wiffle ball player in the Potomac Wiffle Ball League. Loves to hike across the Western Trail system as he bounces one towards a charging shortstop. He's... Really didn't have much of a chance. Fantasia with outstanding speed and the Red Sox fan is aboard with a leadoff infield hit for the Mets. And here's the always dangerous Josh Wendler. Santa Rosa, California, born in Santa Rosa, California. He lives in Santa Rosa today. Original member of the REBL Mets. 2014 REBL AL All-Star starter, and he sends a drive, and the left fielder slips and cannot recover. 
Here comes Fantasia to third, and Josh Wendler is in with a long double to left field, and they're at second and third with nobody out, and the Mets are threatening. Now we mentioned Chris Fantasia, the manager of the Mets. On the other side, it's Bobby Salentis managing the A's. And right now, the A's are in trouble, second and third, nobody out. So the third place hitter coming up here is Owen White. Owen out of Sebastopol, California, graduated from El Molino High School and was picked up this year as a free agent. High school teammates not only here, at, well, here at, with Alfonso Robles. And he's got good power. Second and third with nobody out. We're in the home half of inning number one. And a good eye that time by Owen White, who once wrestled a bear. And shockingly, the bear held out his hand afterwards as a sign of mutual respect. Zach Mendeblaze is on deck. Mark June Kiliani is our home plate umpire for game one of three here. And we're expecting a high temperature today as that's ball four. And Owen White is aboard, and that will load the bases as Zach Mendeblay is a very dangerous hitter. One reason why he's in that cleanup spot. But we're expecting temperatures today to get up into the high 80s. But right now, 75 degrees. It feels really good out here. Minda Blaze, a longtime member of this event, lives in born and born and lives in Santa Rosa, California. And he swings and wallops one down the left field line. And that ball is going to be in there for extra bases. One run is going to score. Two runs are going to score. Here comes Owen White. Here comes a throw to the plate. It'll be cut off, and it's a three-run double for Zach Mendeblaze who's been with the Mets since 2014. And he wanted me to say hello to his, his wife, Kelsey, and son, Grayson, and Emerson, and the newborn, Hudson, four months old. And I guess he's a huge Disney fan. He loves Batman and Star Wars, and he's also a big San Francisco Giants fan. And he's just given his team a 3 nothing first-inning lead. Now the talented catcher, Ryan Ponce, who was born in the Manila, Philippines, grew up in Cotati, California, and graduated from Anali High School in 2012. Fouls that one out of play. Drafted first overall by the Mets in 2013, the REBL Mets, not the New York Mets. And he works for the FDA as an inspector. Wife, Erin. And they live in Pittsburgh, California with their dog, Sky. He's down a couple of strikes here. Still nobody out here in the first inning. We're in the bottom of the first inning. And a 3-0 lead for the Mets and looking for more with a runner at second. And here's a swing and a foul ball backing out of play. So Ryan Ponce really hanging in there against Davenport. Jordan Greeley, Greenley is on deck for the Mets. Runner at second, nobody out, three runs in. And he takes high, two balls, two strikes. So a tough first inning so far for the talented Jarrell Davenport. He delivers, and it's outside, full count. Another outstanding play by the catcher. And Hassan Halfen. Payoff pitch is driven hard into right center field. That's going to get down, and it's 4 to nothing. Zach Mendeblaze scores easily from second base. A good job by the outfield holding Ponce to a double. That is hit number four here in the first, and just like that, the Mets lead 4 to nothing. Now Jordan Greenlee out of Napa, California, graduated from Vintage High School in Napa. Played defensive end collegiately for the Northwestern State Louisiana Club in the Southland Conference of the Division I. 
added to the Redwood Empire Baseball League's Mets as a free agent this year. So Greenlee batting with a runner at second. Still nobody out here in the first, and four runs have come across. You're watching a day at the Coliseum on APN Sports and APMVideo.com. If you're heading down to the World Series this year, Give us a call. You can go to our website and get our phone number at apnvideo.com and reserve any World Series game on video. That's ball four. The first six have reached against Davenport, and now Angelo Mendeblaze. Mendeblaze from Santa Rosa, California, drafted by the Mets in 2015, went to L.C. Allen High School, and he did that with His current teammate with the Mets and a teammate here today, Josh Wendler. And it was his cousin, Zach Mendeblaze, who just hit that three-run double to put the Mets up by a score of three to nothing. Now with the Ryan Ponce double, it's four to nothing. Big A's fan right here. Wife Marisol. Wants to give her a shout out on the video. And he does not get cheated at the plate most of the time. Good hitter. Angelo Mendeblaze, right-handed hitter. That was a fine play by Ferguson at second base. Keeping that ball on the infield. First and second, still nobody out. We're in the bottom of the first inning. And he pops it up, and Ferguson has a beat on it. He'll make the catch, and there's one down. So they get an out finally on a pop-up to the second baseman, and here is Alfonso Robles. California native, lives in Santa Rosa, graduated from El Molina High School with teammate Owen White. And he's up there in an RBI opportunity, first and second with one man out. And he takes the first pitch high, ball one. Classically trained saxophone player who has performed solo in many nightclubs in the western continental United States. And he grounds one to the shortstop. This is going to be trouble. And no play, and that'll be another infield hit. That is the fifth hit of the first inning here for the Mets. And now the bases are loaded for Matt Yosting. Lives in Petaluma, California. He was born in Washington, active duty in the United States Coast Guard, stationed in Two Rock, California. Father of two boys, Zach and Killian. He pops it up. First base side, long run, and a tremendous running catch. Well, you know, there's a lot of foul territory here at the Oakland Coliseum. And in most ballparks, that ball isn't going to be caught. Travis Miller with a tremendous play for out number two, and now Nick Rodkin will bat. Rodkin out of Petaluma, California, lives in Oakland. He was born in Petaluma, and he's been a Mets teammate for 10 years now, 11th season with the Mets of the Redwood Empire. Got a tremendous memory. He can recreate tone, note, or a song he hears after hearing it only once. He's a big Giants fan, good hitter at the plate, and was way out in front of that one. And the right-hander trying to extend what has been a four-run, five-hit first inning for the Mets. It's game one of three of a day at the Coliseum. The bases are loaded, two out. The pitch. Strike Three called, got him on the outside corner, and the side is retired. So we head to the second from the Oakland Coliseum. Four nothing Mets. And welcome back to the Oakland Coliseum. A day at the Coliseum. Jeff Lowry, APMVideo.com, and one of the mainstays of this tournament. Tony Corkill coming to the plate, born and raised in Santa Rosa, California. Twenty-year-old son Andrew. He played high school ball as he takes ball one. He played high school ball at Santa Rosa High School, the Joe DiMaggio Travel Ball, currently plays fast pitch softball 
and the Redwood Empire Baseball League. On the Federal League, Black Sox, he is a diehard Giants fan. He plays for the Federal League, Black Sox. Baseball is his first love since age seven. Cornerstone of his life, honored and blessed to be playing America's pastime. He bats leading off the top of the second inning as the A's trail the Mets four to nothing. A three-run double by Zach Mendeblaze in the first inning, followed by an RBI double by Ryan Ponce. Two strikes on Cork Hill. He'll be followed by second baseman Casey Ferguson and shortstop Clem Healy. And a swing and a miss. And Fantasia has his third strikeout of the day if they can complete it at first. So a nice job by the catcher, Ryan Ponce, firing on to first base to get the put out and the assist. And here's Casey Ferguson batting for the first time. Heldsburg, California, where he was born. Here with his wife, Amanda, and his two children, Aya and Richard Mack. He is a Santa Rosa Junior College graduate with degrees in social and behavioral science. 4-0 lead for the Mets. They're in the field with the A's batting top of the second. And strike two called on a well-placed pitch by Chris Fantasia, the starting pitcher today for the Mets. And tried to get him to fish for one outside. One ball and two strikes to count on Ferguson. And a swing and a miss. And really just came back and put a little extra mustard on that fastball and blew it by the swinging Casey Ferguson. Now Clem Healy with two out and nobody on here in the top of the second inning. Squares to Bunn. He fouls that one off. 34 years old, lifelong baseball and Oakland A's fan. He helped founded the Florida Tech Baseball Club in 2008 where he attended college for both his undergrad and master's degree. He played two years for Florida Tech in Division I of the National Club Baseball Association. And since college... He has played for 11 years in the Central Florida Brevard County Baseball League. And he swings and hits a fly ball back into center field. Wendler on the run. He makes a spectacular catch to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on after an inning and a half of baseball. The Mets four, the A's coming up. Mets batting here in the bottom of the second inning. Boy, Josh Wendler ending the inning with a spectacular play, and now the first batter pops out to the right side where the first baseman takes care of business out number one. Travis Miller. So Madero popping out to the first baseman, Petaluma, California native, and the next batter... Brian Montanez fouls it off. Jonathan Madero, by the way, wanted to say hello to his wife, Dara, kids Haley, Maya, Liam, Oliver, and Camilla. And they are all on hand watching this game, and he's a big Giants fan, but this is Brian Montanez at the plate, a San Francisco born and... Currently residing in Santa Rosa, California, a former member of the REBL Mets and currently on the REBL Diamondbacks. Wife Liz is on hand to watch Brian play as he's hanging alive up there against Davenport, Jarrell Davenport in his second inning of work. Really got roughed up in the first, but this guy is a great competitor and he's kind of one of these guys you might get him early He can come up right back and throw three or four or five innings of shutout baseball and allow his team to get back into the ballgame. Brian is an avid sports and Pokemon card collector. And also a big Giants fan, obviously, coming from San Francisco. He bats with nobody on, one man out. We're in the home half of the second. The Mets batting, leading four to nothing.
Jim Kiliani, the home plate umpire, calling the balls and strikes here today. Two strikes on the final hitter in the lineup here for the Redwood Empire Mets. And Davenport delivers, and a swing and a miss, and that is going to be his second strikeout of the day. Two down, we go back to the top of the order. Starting pitcher, Chris Fantasia. Fantasia, a single, a run scored in that four-run first. We're in the bottom of the second. Mets lead 4-0. That's a cold strike, and it's nothing in one. At a Kensington, Maryland. Big Red Sox fan, and we mentioned he loves to hike across the western trail system from Washington to Southern California. He takes strike two called. And the count is no balls and two strikes with two out, nobody on. We're in the... Bottom half of inning number two. Mets and the A's, a rematch of the 73 World Series, the pitch. And that went off the outside corner. One and two on the right-handed hitting leadoff hitter for the Mets. Josh Wendler is waiting on the wings on deck. And this one is popped up, and Jarrell has a beat on it. And foul territory, first base side, hauls it in. At the end of two... It's four to nothing in favor of the Mets. Now you're getting a wide shot of Oakland Alameda Coliseum as we go to the top of the third inning. It'll be Anthony Lopez, Mark Stoll, and then leadoff hitter Hassan Halfen. First pitch to Anthony Lopez, and that's in there for a called strike. Plays with Bobby Salentis, REBL Athletics, big Oakland A's fan, also likes the Cowboys, the Lakers, enjoys playing golf and fantasy sports. One ball, one strike to the left-handed hitter, and he slaps it out of play. So that'll run the count at one ball and two strikes. And Chris tried to go catch that outside corner or maybe even get him to try to fish for it. Two balls, two strikes on the left-handed hitter. The pitch. And he stays alive. He just got a piece of that one. Ryan Ponce doing the catching for this man, Chris Fantasia, in his third inning of work. He has pitched two innings of one hit, one run, uh, one hit, no hit. One hit, no run baseball. Here at Ricky Henderson Field, Oakland Coliseum. 3-2 3-2 pitch. And strikeout number five. Got him looking. Five strikeouts for Chris through three. Make that two and a third inning. And that'll bring up Mark Stoll. Walking up there, a cool 5'9", 182 pounds, respectfully. The Santa Rosa Slammer, the Burbs Bruiser. Mr. Meat Man, Mark Stoll, in his second season in the Redwood Empire Baseball League, and he's a member of the Continental Division Athletics. Right-handed hitter, he'll play some infield. Probably see him at second base. As we play here in the top of the third inning, the A's and the Mets, with the Mets leading it four to nothing. Fantasia with five punch outs already in this game. He missed inside with a ball. Ready with the next offering, and that one is going to catch the outside corner. That's an awfully good pitch. He could probably use that location again, and he went for it, and... A borderline pitch, and Mark Stoll with a good eye draws the one-out walk. Hassan Halfen, who tripled back in the top of the first inning, will come to the plate. Runner at first and one man out. First pitch, fastball inside, ball one. Well, both catchers donning the number 24 number. That was worn by... Barry Bonds. Was it Barry Bonds? Or was that 25? I can't remember now. Who was 24? Oh, just Willie Mays, yeah. 
Maybe these guys are big Willie Mays fans. Who knows? Truck driver. He swings and wallops one down the left field line. That's going to be in there. That'll be extra bases. Mark Stoll heading to third, and he thought about coming home, and he puts on the brakes and gets back safely to third. So a one-out double for Hassan Halfin, who has five total bases in the game and just two at-bats. And here's Travis Miller, who's looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 1. He takes a strike on the outside corner. 42-year-old, and again... Father to four beautiful children, Adrian, Dazzy, Carson, and Clayton. Second and third occupied and fouled that one off, 0-2. There's a look at your base runners, second and third, one out. Popped him up, and this is going to be playable? No, it's out of play. A lot of foul territory here at the Oakland Coliseum, no doubt about that. And this time he pops it up almost in the same spot out of play. A beautiful morning for baseball. Our game time first pitch was at 75 degrees. This one's going to be playable. And the shortstop will call off everyone. He'll make the play for out number two. So a routine catch by Angelo is that Angelo Mendeblaze? No, that was John. That was Jonathan who made the put out. First pitch to Albert Higgs, ball one. Two out, second and third. And he pops this one up, and in foul territory, unable to make the play is the first baseman. So two strikes on Higgs. And he wallops one into deep right center field. That ball's going to get down. It's going to score two runs, and the lead has been cut in half. Here comes Riggs all the way to third base, and he's got a triple. A two-run triple for Albert Higgs, and it's 4-2 to now. So they finally break through against a very tough Chris Fantasia. That is the third hit of the day. Ball one to cleanup hitter and manager Bobby Salentis, who was hit by a pitch back in the first inning. And he represents the tying run. And he pops this one up right side. The second baseman drifts over, and he will make the catch. Anthony Robles to retire the side. But two big runs on a two-run triple by Higgs. Cuts the lead in half. We go to the bottom half of the third inning. Mets batting and leading it 4-2. to two. This is a day at the Coliseum, and this is APMVideo.com. Josh Wendler will step in to the batter's box, and he'll try to get maybe a couple of those runs back here, get something started. Born in Santa Rosa, California, and still lives there. And an original member of the Redwood Empire Baseball League, and he tried to put that one up into the hills of Oakland and came up empty-handed. It'll be Josh Wendler, Owen White, and then Zach Mendeblaze. And Mendeblaze had the big three-run double. That's been the difference. You got a close-up look at right-handed starter Jarrell Davenport, the San Francisco native. Wendler doubled and scored in the first inning. We're in the top of the, or rather the bottom half of inning number three. And a chopping ball, and here's a charging third baseman who will make the play, and a nice stretch down there at first base, one down. Nice job down at the hot corner. Nice stretch by Tony Corkhill at first base. So Windler is out 5-3, to three, and here's Owen White, who walked and scored in that four-run first inning. Davenport in his third inning of work, the starting pitcher for the A's, and he's outside for a ball. You're watching A Day at the Coliseum. This is APM Video. And quickly, two balls and no strikes on Owen White.
Five hits in total, four runs for the Mets. Two runs on three hits so far for the A's. Both teams out of the Redwood Empire Baseball League. Game three will feature a team from Oregon. It will have a few players that play locally on that roster. They, I don't think they could bring down enough to really fill a roster. That's ball four. So Owen White never got the bat off his shoulders. He's at first base for Zach Mendeblays, who had the big three-run double back in the first inning. Mets lead it 4-2, to two, bottom half of the third inning. Out of play to the right side. No balls in one strike. And throw a quick throw over to first base. Huge Disney fan here. Batman, Star Wars fan, Giants fan. Wants to say hello to his wife, Kelsey, once again. Son, Grayson, Emerson, and newborn, Hudson. Four months. So they've been busy. This ball gets away and heads down the right field line. Owen White, with good speed, will make it easily to third base. That'll be a throwing error on the pitcher. With the score, 4-2. to two, And Owen White with a chance to get at least one run back that they gave up two runs that last half inning. This one has popped up on the right side. Stoll is under it and he's got it. Two down. Owen White sits 90 feet away from the fifth run of the day for the Mets. Two down and here's Ryan Ponce. He had a long double to right center field. A good piece of hitting going the opposite way. Two out runner at third. Popped him up. That's going to find the seats right behind home plate. No balls and one strike on Ryan Ponce. Trying to get that runner in at third and at least get it back to a three-run deficit. They led four to nothing after two innings of play. The A's scored two on a Albert Higgs two-run triple in the top of this third inning. We're in the bottom of the third. Good pitch. Two strikes on Ryan Ponce with two out. And he got jam shotted, and Cork Hill will take it to the bag. So we go to the top of the fourth inning as the Mets come up empty handed against Jarrell Davenport. We go to the top of the fourth, Mets four. And the A's, too. This is a day at the Coliseum on APNvideo.com. Four runs, five hits, no errors for the home team, the Mets. 2-3-0 and oh for the Athletics. We go to the top of the fourth inning. The stadium opened up in 66 for the Oakland A's. As we go to the top of the fourth inning, and starting pitcher Jarrell Davenport will be the first batter. The A's got here in 68 as this one smashed down to third and a nice play gobbling it up is Nick Rodkin on the first base, one down. Tony Corkill will be the batter. Interesting enough that the A's, and if you know anything about Oakland baseball, as the first pitch is outside ball one, you know that the A's had tremendous success in the early 70s. It took them, what, four years to make their first playoff. That's a swing and a foul tip. One ball, one strike on Corkill. And I think he went around. Let's see. Well, apparently not. Two balls and one strike. And they had so much... I don't know if it was bad luck or just the fact that they kept shipping great players to the New York Yankees, but when they were in Kansas City, they were well below the 500 mark in the 13 seasons that they were there as the count goes to three balls and one strike on Cork Hill. And apparently he did go around on that one, so three balls, two strikes. 
Higgs begins to loosen up in the bullpen for the A's. Now the payoff pitch. That's out of play. But it's interesting that the when the Kansas City A's moved to Oakland, the core players that they brought over, and all of them were raw talent at the time, as this one's bounced down to third, and Rick's got another oppor- or Nick's got another opportunity, and he throws Cork Hill out on a fine play. So two up and two down here in the top of the fourth inning. The Mets leading it four to two over the A's. And here's Casey Ferguson trying to extend the inning. First pitch from Fantasia is swung on, line drive, base hit in the center. Hit number four for the A's. And with two out, a runner at first base, Clem Healy, who flied the center field his only time up in the second. But you look at the greatness that this A's team had. They were division champs in 71, and then they reel off three world championships. They are the last team in Major League Baseball history to win back to back to back. And then they won another divisional title in 75 when they lost to the Boston Red Sox in the AL Championship Series. But when you have a core coming from Kansas City that included Hall of Famers, Reggie Jackson, Catfish Hunter, Blue Moon Odom, he wasn't a Hall of Famer, Joe Rudy, Burt Campanaris, Rick Monday came over from that, from that team. Sal Bando came over. I mean, that is a very impressive core of players as Clem Healy draws the walk. And now runners are at first and second with two out and Anthony Lopez. He was a strikeout victim back in the third. Fantasia through the first three and two thirds has struck out five. He's given up a total of four hits and two runs, both are. The stadium holds about 63, a little over 63,000 people. If they open up Mount Al Davis out there, that's uh, the seats commonly referred to. It's the fifth oldest ballpark in Major League Baseball. Quick snap throw down by Ponce. First baseman wasn't even on the bag. And Catfish Hunter is the all-time winningest pitcher in Oakland A's history with 131. Vita Blue second. Dave Stewart is third. Barry Zito is fourth. And Bob Welch with 96 wins is fifth. Inside, and that is going to allow Lopez to go down to first base, and all of a sudden the bases are loaded after two relatively easy outs to start the inning. A Ferguson single and back-to-back walks by Healy and Lopez, and now Mark Stoll, the final hitter in the lineup here for the A's, as they bat here in the top of the fourth inning, takes a strike. No balls, one strike to Stoll. Strike two called, let her high fastball. And Fantasia coming right after the right-handed hitting second baseman. No balls, two strikes. The pitch. And he stays alive as he fouls it straight back, and it's one and two. No balls, two strikes. Fantasia kicks and fires, and that strike three called on the outside corner. That is his sixth strikeout of the day, and he leaves the bases loaded. At the end of three and a half, it's the Mets four and the A's two. This is a day at the Coliseum on APN. Jeff Lowry back here from the home of the Oakland Athletics. We go to the bottom half of inning number four. Jordan Greenlee, who walked in that four-run first, will lead things off, and he takes outside ball one. Two outstanding catchers right here. Hassan Halfen, and on the other side, number 34, Ryan Ponce. And a wave and a miss. Greenlee, a, I guess his position would be outfield. And when you play at this level of ball, you are oftentimes asked to play positions. Maybe you're not uh, as sharp as your primary position. A ball and two strikes. 
That one is inside, and that'll even the count on the right-handed hitter at two balls and two strikes. Fourth inning of work for starting pitcher Gerald Davenport. And here's a ball slapped out into left field and a leadoff single. That is the first hit for the Mets since the first inning when they scored four. And it's hit number six in the game. And now Angelo Mendeblaze popped up to the second baseman. First pitch to him, and he hammers one foul and way foul and out of play. No balls, one strike on Angelo. You got a runner at first base, nobody out. We're in the home half of the fourth inning. Mets batting and leading by a score of four to two. Outside for a ball, and another nice stop there by Hassan Halfin, the starting catcher for the Athletics. It's Davenport. Gets set to pitch to the big right-handed hitter, and he hits one a ton. Deep into left field, and Salentos won't be able to get it. That ball's going to roll all the way to the wall, and both the men to blaze here today have driven in a run with a long double to left field, and the lead is back up to three at five to two. So men to blaze puts a charge into that one. Five to two here in the bottom half of inning number four, a day at the Coliseum. So with a runner at second, here's Alfonso Robles with a chance to drive in a run, and he'll take the first offering from Davenport outside. One ball, no strikes to the right-handed hitter. And this one has popped up, a routine play by Miller, trying to double him off at second, but the second baseman couldn't get back there in time. And there's two down. Check that one down here in the inning. So a single by Greenlee. He scores on the RBI double by Angelo Mendeblaze. And here's Matt Yosting. And a swing and a foul from the man from Moses Lake, Washington. Lives in Petaluma, California. And again... Stationed at Two Rock, California as a United States Coast Guard member. He bats with a runner at second at base and only one man out. We're in the bottom half of the fourth inning. A 5-2 lead. The biggest lead of the game for the Mets was after they scored four unanswered there in that first inning and led 4-0. Fourth inning of work for Davenport. Here's a high pop-up in the shallow right. Ferguson going out, still going out, and he makes an over-the-shoulder catch. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a fine play right there. And the second out recorded on a spectacular play by the ace second baseman and Casey Ferguson. That'll bring up third baseman Nick Rodkin. A strikeout victim back in the first, and he was way out in front of that one, and it's nothing in one. Five to two in favor of the Mets. We're in the bottom half of the fourth. And he lines one, but Higgs is there to make the catch and that'll retire the side. A run, two hits, one left. At the end of four, the Mets lead the A's. Five to two, it's a day at the Coliseum. All right, we go to the top of the fifth inning. Five runs, seven hits, no errors for the Mets. The A's, two runs, four hits, one error. Chris Fantasia, there he is. Now in his fifth inning of work, the starting pitcher for the Mets. And we go back to the top of the A's lineup in their outstanding catcher and Hassan Halfin. And the first pitch bounces up there, ball one. All Hassan has done today is triple and doubled and scored a run. Two and nothing on the right-handed hitting leadoff hitter in the A's lineup and catcher. And quickly, three balls, no strikes. Well, you could tell maybe that Chris was trying to get a little extra on the velocity. He has not been able to retire this guy and now falls behind three balls and no strikes to him. That caught the outside corner. 
Mark, June Kiliani, Brewster, Chandler, and LeBoy, the umpires will be used today. That's ball four to Hassan Halfin, a leadoff walk to start the fifth, an inning in which the A's would like to maybe get a little bit closer to the Mets. Here's Travis Miller 0 for 2. Out of play to the left side, and that one's going to find the seats about seven rows deep. No balls and one strike on Travis. Six strikeouts in total now for Chris Fantasia. Quick snap throw, not in time at first. Miller is 0 for 2. Good pitch on the outside corner. A little bit of a leeway there from our home plate umpire, Mark Giunchiliani, on the against the right-handers on that outside part of the plate. He's probably given a little, little leeway to the pitcher out there. Let's see if he stays out there. No, he comes back inside, and it's two balls, two strikes on Travis Miller. Albert Higgs is on deck. Here's a ball laced in the left center field, and it's going to drop in for a hit. So the first two have reached. Halfin with a walk. Miller with a single to left field. Nobody out, and here's Higgs. We had a big two-run triple to get the A's back into the ball game. That came in the top of the third inning. So the Mets lead at 5-2, to two, but the A's are threatening with the tying run at the plate. And the first pitch, good velocity and a strike called. Albert popped up to the second baseman in the first, doubled in or tripled in three in the third. Outside. And not a bad idea on that pitch placement that time by Fantasia. Comes back in and Higgs fouls it back in out of play. Albert Higgs. Multi-MVP, and always one of the guys that are in the tops in batting average and slugging. This is a guy that was drafted by the Detroit Tigers and also had a pretty good football career. He played for the Sacramento Rattlers and led them to several championships. He lifts one in the air and fairly deep, but getting a beat on it is the right fielder, and he'll make a fine running catch. Halfin will move up 90 feet to third. They're on the corners with one man out, and here's Bobby Salentis, hit by a pitch, and he's popped up to the second baseman. First and third with one out. And Bobby sends one, a soaring fly ball to shallow center. Wendler lining it up. Here's the catch, the tag, the throw home will not be in time. It'll be a sacrifice fly for Bobby Salentis. The quick throw down to second is not in time. And now it is five to three. Sacrifice fly for Bobby Salentis, the manager of the A's. Two down, runner at second base, and here's Davenport. First pitch swinging, bounces it through the hole. And that's going to probably plate another run. The Wendler's throw to the plate is right there in time, and they got him. What a sensational throw by the Mets center fielder, Josh Wendler. And that'll retire the side. The A's get one, and they do not. Well, they leave one. And at the end of four and a half, the Mets five and the Athletics three. All right, we go to the home half of the fifth inning, and the Mets coming up, and again, kind of a new ball game. But what a play by Josh Wendler. He has uh, had a couple of web gems out there today in center field, and this is the fifth inning of work for Jarrell Davenport, and the first batter slaps one to Higgs at short, and he'll make the play and the easy throw on one down. So Jonathan Mondero is out of there, out of Petaluma, California. Nice job by Albert Higgs, who's also got a couple of RBIs at the plate. And here's Brian Montanez. Takes the first pitch outside for ball one. A 
A beautiful day. Temperature closing in on 80 degrees for this game one of three. A day at the Coliseum. And a special thanks to a great job by Kenton Lewis. This one's going to be in play. Looped out in the right field. It drops for a base hit. So Montanez now one for two at the plate. We go back to the top of the Mets lineup and Chris Fantasia. He's one for two with a run scored. He popped out in the second inning. He's pitched... Some good baseball, giving up three runs in five innings. And Tasia also has six strikeouts to his credit. Runner at first base. Two balls and or one ball and no strikes. Chris, a pretty good hitter in his own right. And he chops one towards the hole. The third baseman charging, and I don't think he's going to get him. Fantasia runs too well and a little nonchalant down there at third base. So Chris Fantasia now a two for three day. Runners are at first and second with one out. Here in the home half of the fifth inning, the Mets batting, leading five to three. Here's Josh Wendler. A double a run scored in the first. He is grounded to third. And he swings and lifts a fly ball into left field. A long run, and that ball will be caught. Nice catch out there. And that is going to be the first, second out of the inning by Bobby Solentis. So two down, and here's third base. Third baseman and third place hitter, Owen White. Started the game at third base, and he takes outside for ball one. Mets batting, leading at five to three. We're in the home half of the fifth. Change up, strike called. Pretty good ball player here looking for his first hit. He has walked in each of his first two at-bats, and he scored a run in that four-run first for the Mets. Davenport trying to get a scoreless inning, and if Higgs can make the play, he will go to second. Wasn't sure which way to go, and that will take care of the fifth inning. We head to the top of the six. It's a day at the Coliseum. The Mets five and the A's three. Uh, Chris Fantasia coming out for his sixth inning of work. We go to the top of the sixth inning with the Mets up by two in the first pitch outside ball one to Tony Corkill who has struck out and grounded to third. He swings and wallops one in the center field, but there is Josh Wendler, who has played outstanding for out number one. Casey Ferguson has struck out and singled in two tries. Strike one called on a good fastball. Three runs, five hits for the A's so far. The 0 1 pitch. And a breaking ball in there, nothing in two. Ready with the next offering, and he swung through it and missed. And a strikeout, the seventh of the day for Chris Fantasia. Two quick outs here in the top of the sixth inning. And the next batter up is going to be Clem Healy. Drew a walk his last time up. Fly to center field back in the second. Beautiful day here in Oakland. Though we are... S- Expected to have a high temperature today of 88 degrees. I don't think in all the years I've been coming up here covering these games and some of those over at AT AT&T, I don't believe I've I've ever encountered temperatures out of the mid-70s. Especially you go on the other side of the bay in San Francisco. I don't know if I've ever had a day over 72 over there.
Fantasia. And he missed ball four. So Healy draws the fifth walk of the day for the A's, and here's Lopez. First pitch to him outside corner for a called strike. Nothing in one. Lopez has struck out and walked. Fantasia has K'd seven batters while walking five. And he's given up a total of six hits. Check that. Five hits in total. And three runs in five and two-thirds. Pretty good outing so far. Lopez down a couple of strikes. Just simply overthrew on that one. And it's one and two. Mark Stoll hoping for a chance on deck. Runner at first, two out. Top of the sixth inning. A's batting, but they trail five to three at a day at the Coliseum. That one in the dirt and a nice job by Ryan Ponce. Two balls and two strikes. There's Mark Stoll waiting in the wings on deck. Here's the pitch. And he's run the count full, so he got ahead 0-2. Let's see what he can do here with a runner at first. He goes, and it's outside ball four. Back-to-back walks. Six walk issued by Chris Fantasia. And now the tying run is aboard for Mark Stoll, who walked and scored in the third, struck out in the fourth. Takes ball one. Tough pitch there, fought off by Mark Stoll. No balls in one strike. But you're talking about a major league player. I had a chance to film a couple of games at Roger Clemens. Pitched down in Arizona back in 2005. One and one the count. And it was just amazing not only how smooth and fluent his delivery was, but how consistent his delivery is. You don't telegraph pitches. It's very very difficult even for major leaguers. It's two and one on Stoll to pick up on a guy. And, and obviously he was he's a Hall of Fame pitcher. I mean, no matter what you think of him, as this one is grounded to the right side and a nice play throw to first in time. And that will do it here in the inning. Mets come to the plate in the bottom half of the six, clinging to a 5-3 lead. Getting a look at Mr. Davenport on the mound, the right-hander, a true battler out there. This is a guy you want on your team. Facing men to blaze. And his first pitch, and it got him. Well, he's going to stand in there. He's not going to take the hit by pitch, and he lines one into left field. That's a base hit. Boy, I'll tell you what, I just absolutely love that part of the game when a guy says, nope, I want to continue to hit. And now the catcher, Ryan Ponce, who had an RBI double his first time up. And he swings and hits one up the middle, base hit. Mendo Blaze to second, and now the ball gets away from the center fielder. And Mendo Blaze is going to be in at third, safe. So runners are at first and third, and here's Greenlee chopping one foul left side. No balls and one strike. Greenlee has walked, singled, and scored a run. That came in the fourth inning. 5-3 Mets. They lead it here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And you got runners now at second and third. Ponce with his second hit in three tries. He's at second base. And Mendeblaze is two for three, and he's standing at third. And here's a shot foul down the left side, and an 0-2 count on Jordan Greenlee with Angelo Mendeblaze on deck. Sixth inning of work for Jarrell Davenport. Boy, he's been pretty stellar over the last four, and this one hit deep down the left field line, and it's out of play. Two strikes on Greenlee. 
Mets lead it 5-3. to three. The Davenport's really settled down. Four innings of one-run baseball after that four-run first. And Greenlee just got a piece of that one. That's a good idea right there. You know, I don't believe in, even if you have an 0-2 count, throwing a waste pitch, I don't think you waste any. But if you can get that guy to go fishing on an outside pitch, that one swung on and, again, just getting a piece of it. I'll tell you, Jordan is really battling up there. Davenport still got pretty good stuff out there, but then he leaves that one way outside. Runners are two runners on with nobody out. And this one should stay in play, and this one lifted to right field, coming in and making a nice one-handed grab. The throw will come to the plate, but the runner will score, and that's Zach Mendeblays. That's a big insurance run, and that will double up the lead to 6-3, and good base running by Ryan Ponce down at third. Sack fly for Greenlee. And it's 6-3 in favor of the Mets here. They've never been headed in this game, and here's Angelo Mendeblaze, who has popped up to second. He has also got an RBI double. That came back in the single run inning in the fourth. And got the hands in on that off-speed pitch, and he pops it up to the second baseman. Nice play by Stoll. Two down in the inning. And now the batter is Alfonso Robles. He's one for two, a single back in that four-run first. Mets lead it here by a score of 6-3 to three over the Athletics. It is Davenport in his sixth inning of work. Nine hits in total now for the... R-E-B-L Mets. They got four runs in the first, and this one skips by the catcher, and the run will score, and the Mets add on to their lead here in Oakland's Coliseum and lead it 7-3 here in the bottom half of inning number six. Well, we apologize for all the machinery behind us making a lot of noise. Here's a swing and a ball hit up the middle, fielded by the shortstop. Nice play. He'll throw to first, and that'll retire the side. But the Mets add on to their lead, and they lead 7-3. It's a day at the Coliseum. Well, the traffic, as usual, heavy on the Bay Bridge. You're watching A Day at the Coliseum, brought to you by APM Video Sports. Hassan Halfin has been perfect at the plate, and he will be the first batter to face Fantasia, who has not been able to retire the A's catcher and leadoff hitter. First pitch to him is in the dirt ball one. Seven runs on nine hits so far for the Mets. And just five hits, three runs for the Athletics. Two balls and no strikes. Hassan led the game off with a triple. He doubled and scored in the third and had a walk and a run scored in the fifth inning. He'll take a strike, and it's two balls and one strike. And the fastball is high, three and one. Chris in his seventh inning of work. He has scattered five hits and three runs in the three one. Strike called on the outside corner, three and two. I think the crowd thought that last pitch was a bit outside. Here's the payoff pitch. That's inside ball four, and he has been on base all four times he's come to the plate. (laughs) 
That'll bring up Travis Miller. And a base hit his last time up. And here is Hassan heading down to second, and he's got a stolen base. So he is in scoring position as the A's are trying to cut into a 7-3 deficit and a jam shot on Travis Miller, and he pops it up to the catcher who makes the play for route number one. Albert Higgs will bat for the fourth time. He had a two-run double back in the third. He's one for three. Well, nice job by the Mets catcher to keep that ball at bay and keeping Halfin at second. Here's a shot down the left field line, and that's just foul. Well, Higgs could, he could use a run or two here. No question about that. Boy, a good fastball in the outside corner as Fantasia continues to deal. A's batting here in the top of the seventh inning. They trail 7-3. to three. And Albert pops it up. He got jammed on that, pulled the hands in, and the second baseman will take care of business, Alfonso. And that is two down here in the inning. Three out of the four last batters faced by Chris. He is set down, and now Salentis helps him out by going after the high cheese. He has been hit by a pitch, popped up to the second baseman, and a sack fly back in the fifth inning to pull his team within two at five to three. Bobby Salentis, 0 2 pitch. Went back upstairs, not a bad idea. Salent is offering at a high fastball earlier in the count. Let's see where he comes back here. He just blew it by him. And an outstanding pitch, his eighth strikeout. No runs, no hits. One man left on. And we got a new pitcher in as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning here. It's a day at the Coliseum. Seven to three, the Mets lead it here on APN. And Mr. Yosting. The next hitter up here, he is 0 for 2, looking for his first hit. So Davenport's six strong innings, ground ball shortstop, first pitch hitting, and Yosting is going to be thrown out 6 to 3. So Bobby Salentis back at shortstop here to start the home half of the seventh inning. And the next batter is Nick Rodkin with a drive into left center field, and that's going to drop in for a base hit. That is the seventh hit of the, or check, check that, the tenth hit of the day for the Mets. And that'll bring up Madero looking for his first hit. This is his third plate appearance. He's 0 for 2. New pitcher is Clem Healy. Davenport, six innings. He gives up seven runs. Long pause by Healy in the pitch. A big cut on and a miss. Jonathan has popped up. He is grounded to third base. As we play here in the bottom of the seventh inning. I don't think we're going to get the entire nine innings in. We're coming up on that three-hour time threshold. And that's a walk. And now you got runners at first and second. First time Jonathan has been on base. Here's Montanez. Had a base hit his last time up. Bottom half of inning number seven. Seven three Mets. And that ball hit him, and let's see if he will elect to stay in the batter's box, and it looks like he's going to go down to first base. So now they are loaded. And we're going to go back to the top of the order, starting pitcher Chris Fantasia. I'm wondering what 
this Carmina Burana is the walk-up music for Chris. He hits a line drive in the right field base hit. One run is going to score. Two runs are going to score. Chris is three for four at the plate. And it's 9-3 to three Mets here in the seventh inning. Runners are at first and third. Two runs coming in. And a clean line drive single, and I would imagine that that will lock up the MVP award unless he comes out and gives up the tying run in the next inning. Here's Josh Wendler. So what a game for Chris Fantasia. Three for four at the plate, two RBIs, a run scored, three runs produced, and seven solid innings of pitching. Josh Wendler doubled and scored in the first. He is grounded to third and flied to left. He also has an outfield assist and a defensive indifference as Fantasia moves along to second base. Line shot, center field. This ball's going to drop in for a base hit. Another run is in. Chris will hold up at third. Wendler is two for four on the day with an RBI. It is a three-run inning. 10-3 Mets as they have scored three runs here in the inning. And Wendler ends up at second base on the throw in. Owen White walked his first two times up. He has grounded the shortstop. So Healy has come on and has had a rough go of it. Only one man out here in the inning. And three runs have come across. The Mets have 12 hits in total. And I think the kids are really enjoying themselves here at the ballpark. Owen White looking for his first hit of the game. And that one high and tight. And I believe it may have just grazed his helmet. The bill of the helmet, possibly. And once again, the bases are loaded. Okay, Zach Mendeblaze already has driven in threes. Two for three. Pop-up. And playable for Hassan, a very difficult play, and he made it look easy two down. Bases remain loaded, and here is Ryan Ponce. He'll take a strike. One ball and one strike. Healy, the only the second pitch, only the third pitcher used in this entire game. Fly ball right field, long run, and it's going to be caught to retire the side. But they get three, and this will be the final half inning of play. We won't have a trivia question as we go to the top of the eighth inning. I think we're going to end up running out of time. So this may very well be the final frame. Well, Chris is coming out and looking for a complete game victor. He leads it 10-3 here, and the first pitch is in there, a called strike to Davenport. Well, the Mets have scored five times in the last two frames here at Ricky Henderson Field, and that ball is drilled down the line. First hit of the day for Davenport. He makes the turn, and he will stay at first base. Only the sixth hit of the day. Here is Tony Corkill, 0 for 3. Takes a fastball and just off the outside corner, ball one. Here's a line drive right back to the mound, and Chris grabs it and rifles it to first. That's a double play. So there's two down here in the inning with lightning-like swiftness. Casey Ferguson started the game at second. He's one for three, and he fouls off the first pitch. Well, we may have enough time if 
this inning doesn't linger for the Mets to come up one more time. The count is one ball and one strike on Casey Ferguson. Two balls and one strike. And special thanks to Kenton Lewis for doing an outstanding job with this event. This one is chopped up along the third baseline, and that'll even the count on the right-handed hitting Casey Ferguson. Two balls, two strikes. Well, we got two more games left in this one-day event. The wind up the pitch. And this one is slapped up the middle, but the second baseman gobbles it up. That's a nice play, and the throw to first. He stayed on the bag in time. And that'll take care of the top of the eighth inning. We go now to the bottom half of the eighth inning from a day at the Coliseum. Jordan Greenlee will lead things off. 10-3 Mets. Well, Higgs will come out and he will be the third pitcher used. Anthony Higgs. I'm sorry, Albert Higgs on the mound now and Greenlee will start things off. Greenlee has been busy today as he swings and misses after the first offering. No balls in one strike, a walk, a single, a run scored, and a sack fly. Bottom half of the eighth inning, and this will be the final inning of the game. And actually, they will probably stop play since the home team is up. And once we get to that three-hour threshold, they will probably stop the game. And that's what... And I'm looking over at Kenton Lewis right now, and he's nodding his head. So Angelo Mendeblaze, who had an RBI double back in the fourth inning. And I'll tell you, both the Mendeblaze have played a, a key role in the success for the Mets here today. The Cousins have collectively driven in four runs. In the big hit of the game, the Zach Mendeblaze three-run double back in the first, that kind of set the tone. So a little bonus play here possibly as we are coming up on that three-hour time limit. Pop up to the shortstop. Alfonso Robles takes a fastball outside for ball one. Higgs looking in. Mets got four runs in the first inning. They led five to two after four. Here's a ground ball to the shortstop. He's charging and Healy's throw to first is in time and I'm wondering if that's gonna be it for the game here. A three up, three down inning for Higgs. Outstanding job and well, maybe we are gonna see a top of the ninth inning. 10 to three in favor of the Mets. And we still got six minutes left to go. That inning went very quickly. And Chris Fantasia is coming out, and he is going for a nine-inning complete game. So a good inning for Albert Higgs. Clem Healy, who went in to play shortstop after pitching an inning, he'll start things off. He'll be the eight, nine, and ten hitters. Healy, Lopez, and Stoll. Clem has walked twice and flied to center field. Fantasia will most likely be the game most valuable player and stay with us at the conclusion of this game as Kenton Lewis will be interviewing our MVP in game one of a day at the Coliseum. He has struck out eight. He has walked six. 
Check that, he's walked seven and needed a strike before inducing his eighth walk of the game. And it's kind of amazing that he has pitched so well with all those walks. It tells you how good he has been, the 3-2. Foul tipped right into the catcher's mitt, and that's out number one. Nine strikeouts for Chris. Anthony Lopez for the fourth time at the plate. He has struck out. He has walked twice. Had a good cut at that pitch. Mets led 5-2 to two after four innings. It was 5-3 to three halfway through, but then five unanswered runs as this one's tapped the third, and the third baseman was playing that way, and his low throw is in time, two down. All right, it's up to Mark Stoll. He's walked and scored, struck out, and grounded the second base. Two out, top of the ninth inning. A 10-3 lead for the Mets here as Chris Fantasia is looking for a complete game. And Mark Stoll, the only thing keeping him from picking up a complete game victory. And here's a shot out in the center field. Wendler broke in, now breaks back, and it's over his head. Here's Mark, around first. Here comes the throw in, and he's in safe sliding with a double. Eighth hit of the day for the A's, and we go back to the top of the order. Hassan Halfin has been perfect. He tripled in his first at bat. He doubled and scored in the third. He walked and scored in the fifth and walked again in the seventh. Two for two with two walks, two runs scored. Outstanding catcher for the Athletics. Bad looking pitch there. It was a little outside. Well, I guess the most disappointing thing, maybe besides the seven walks by Chris, is the fact that he has not been able to retire this guy. I'll tell you, when he if he gets that strike call in the outside corner, he's tough. Here's a shot. Left field. That's a base hit. Here comes Wendler in. He will quickly get it back into the infield, and the runner is going to hold up. I think he could have scored on that one. And what a day for Hassan Halfin. Three for three with two walks and five plate appearances. A perfect day at the Coliseum for Hassan Halfin. First and third, and here is Travis Miller. Most likely the last hitter. We've we've hit the three-hour time as this one is going to get thrown out in the center field, and that will allow the run to score, and it's now 10-4. to four. Stolen base, the second of the day for Halfin. Mark Stoll, and you just heard Kenton Lewis in the background. Travis Miller will be the final batter of the game as this one gets away, and let's see if the runner will score. He will. So it's a two-run inning, cutting it to a... 10 to 5 ball game and here's a bouncing ball to the shortstop tough play he's up he throws he got him and the Mets win game one of a day at the Coliseum on a ground out by Miller they get two in the inning and the final score is 10 to 5 let's send it downstairs to Kenton Lewis Chris congratulations on being the 2022 game one MVP man you did fantastic. Yeah. Hey, tell me a little bit about it. I mean, tell me about the season. Such a season great, great experience out here. I just want to thank everybody who's putting all this on for us, ground crew, everything like that. That was amazing. I mean, it's just such a joy to pitch out in places like Eckersley pitched on and stuff. That was just a great game all around. So, yeah, I love it. Just help, glad to help the team. Actually, what yeah. was your favorite part of it? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, going a complete game out here on this on this field was something something special today. That was really a lot of fun. Well, you pitched great. You Thanks. did well. Thank you. you did Thank really you. well. Yeah. Congratulations, Thanks. man. Thanks. All you. right. Have a good day. You too.